Hi, I'm Peggy Farron, and you're watching the Understand Photography Show, where we talk about travel, nature, and fine art photography. Today we're going to be talking with fine art photographer Rich Smuckler about working with galleries. That's something I think that a lot of people are interested in. The Understand Photography Show is broadcast every Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, or Eastern Daylight Time, I guess in the summer. Um, we are a podcast first, so we're on iTunes, Stitcher, however you listen to podcasts. We're on YouTube and we're on Facebook, so facebook.com slash understand photography, youtube.com slash understand photography. And by the way, it's understand photography. There is no ing. It's not understanding. It's understand. It's command. You got it? Um, so please subscribe. Subscribe to our iTunes, subscribe to iTunes, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our Facebook page. It all helps us. And, and of course, we love it if you interact with us as well. Um, our website is understandphotography.com and we've got a lot of freebies on there that you can download. We also have, oh, I don't know, 150 blog articles. Our, our motto at Understand Photography is we simplify the technical. So if, you like, if you're the kind of photographer who likes things like really spelled out for you, then you are going to like our teaching style. So read a couple of the blog articles and see what you think. On our YouTube channel, we put this show out every Friday at 4, but we also put a short little training video out on Tuesdays, every Tuesday. So check it all out. <laughs> anyway, Rich Smuckler is here today. He's a fine art photography, and he is in museums and galleries, and you know, many he has many people collecting his work. He's, uh, he's, he's got a large variety of work, but he mostly specializes, or what he's known for, is his abstract photography. So welcome to the show. Thank you, Peggy. Thank you for coming. All the way over from Palm Beach, Palm Beach Gardens. How long, how long a drive is that? 10,000 love bugs. Oh my gosh, it's love bug season. <laughs> oh my gosh, you got to get those off fast or they'll ruin your car. <laughs> and for those people who don't know what we're talking about, in Florida, this time of year, the love bugs are mating, and they mate in midair, and they're all over the place. And most of them are on the front of your car if you're driving down the highway, right? Sure. You're going to wreck your car if you don't wash those off. All right, so now you've been in and out of many galleries over your career. I have. So you have a lot of experience in this, so you're a good guy to talk to about this. So if, what are, like, why is it good to be in a gallery? I think you have to consider what your goals are as an artist. Sometimes people just want to be in galleries because they think it makes them feel good. Purely a vanity reason. If you're looking to develop your business and create a portfolio of background that people will look towards and admire and ultimately purchase your artwork then I think that's the goal that you have to consider when you're getting involved with galleries. Okay, all right. I mean, of course, I think most people want to sell their artwork, even though, you know, sometimes that brings, takes a little joy out of it. You know, photography, photography as a hobby is a lot more fun than photography as a business. Yes. So and keep that in mind, everybody who's listening. <laughs> and it's very frustrating huh. because it's only the rare photographer who really can make a living selling pieces off the wall. It, it happens less frequently than we would like to say. Yeah. And you have to keep in mind how much work goes into it, how much cost goes into it, and whether or not it's cost efficient and goal efficient when you're getting involved with the, va the various galleries and museums that you will ultimately work with. Okay, so, all right, so, so the main benefit to working with a gallery is hopefully they'll sell your art for you. I don't know about that. Okay. I don't know about that. I, I think that it's more valuable for your resume than it is for your pocketbook. Mm. Ultimately, the resume will put more money in your pocket, but I think if you're just starting, in order to build that resume, you want to get into galleries that will enhance your name. Oh, see, you know, I hadn't thought of it that way. That's a great, great way to think about it. So uh, what, 
what do they ex okay let's just go step by step are there any downsides to working with a gallery there can be I, I've had galleries that have gone out of business on me and I've not gotten my work back from them oh I've had galleries that have disappointed me in terms of the way the work is marketed or the after show interactions between myself and the gallerist. I've had disappointments in the way the work has been displayed or lit, and we'll get into this in some detail okay. uh, during the course of the show. The cost of putting on a show can be prohibitive, uh. especially if you're just not in a, a group show where you're putting in one or two pieces, but if, if you're putting on a solo show and you have 15 pieces that you have to print and frame and transport that can be we're talking thousands of dollars. I just did it you know I was one of the artists selected for the artist studio tour here in Naples it's a once a year thing and it's it cost me a lot of money yeah. about I think about five thousand yeah. dollars is what I guessed yeah. just and to just to get the pictures right. and I didn't really make that much off of it <laughs> so no. it was kind of disappointing no, it, and, and all times you don't make that much and it's it's but it was very prestigious, so you have to say, well, is that good enough to, say, yeah. spend $5,000 for a little prestige? <laughs> Not just that all the time and energy and yeah, heartache. It, it, your, and your buttons will pop with pride when you're seeing your work out there in a beautiful museum. And opening night, there's, there's no feeling quite like that. But then the show's over and time goes by and you get a call from the gallerist, well, come get your stuff. And you have to go pick up 15 pieces. And guess what? Your closet is already <laughs> bursting. So what do you do with all that? So, and maybe you only sold one or two pieces, which is OK. But now you have a lot of work to deal with. And it's, uh, it's the, the side of the business that people don't think about when they're first getting into it. All right, so let's say, okay, I, want, I, I think my work is good enough. I want to get into an art gallery. How do I choose a gallery first off? Or should I just choose one, or should I go, like, just throw my stuff at everybody? No, no, absolutely not. Uh, you need to consider uh, location and quality of the gallery. Oh, oh good, good point. I mean, if you have a... A, a small gallery in your small town and it's the only gallery in town then by all means but if, if you're in an urban environment where there are dozens of top galleries and galleries that may not be so top then you have to consider which ones you want to get involved with uh, go online see what kind of websites these galleries have oh see what kind of artists they're showing see what they've done in the past. If you recognize the names of the stable of artists who have shown there, and all decent galleries will have a list of their past artists. Okay. If you know any of those artists, by all means, pick up the phone and say, listen, Joe, I was thinking of trying to show my work. What do you think of ABC Gallery. What's, what was your experience? Is he honest? He or her. Is he honest? Is he fair to deal with? Did he market your work well? Did he stick to his word? Um, could you put in a word for me? Uh -huh. Could you tell him, could you give him a call and tell him Gee, I know somebody who's pretty good, and would you consider thinking about him or talking to him? So that would be a start. That's a great, great idea. In fact, we had a lady on the show, um, and Heather, I always make Heather work so hard. She's going to have to look up the show number so we, she can put it in the show notes, but her name was Karen Shulman. And her a high school, she, she's from Massachusetts. But she has a high school acquaintance. He wasn't even that good of a friend to her, but she knew him from high school. And she's, you know, retired, so she's not young. And he's pretty... You, you didn't have to point at me like that. When you... 
<laughs> anyway, she, um, he's a pretty famous painter here in Naples, locally, but he's done very well here. He's got a gallery right on 3rd Street, which is a really expensive place to have a gallery, all this stuff. Anyway, she just called him up and said, do you remember me from high school? And I'm a fine art photographer. And so he, it started with a local show that he included her in, but then he helped her get into another gallery that she's done very well in. So that, whoever, your warm leads, is that what you call them? People that you know or kind of know? or And I'm just going to hog the conversation for just a minute. And anyone who ever listens to this show knows that I harp on this. If you join your local art association, you are going to have those kind of contacts. You're going to meet other artists who can help you. Okay, off my little soapbox about the art association. <laughs> it, it's not a bad idea, in light of that last comment, to start or be part of a photography group. And I like small groups. I think you get more information, you get more traction out of it maybe five, six people, and you can shoot together, you can meet once a month, you can share information, you can share pieces, you can get synergy from that, and you can also get information about showing in galleries. If, if one of them uh, happens to be in a certain gallery, then they could go to bat for you, you could tell you about this place, and you can get a lot of information that way. That's awesome. That's Already, that's such great advice. Look at the list of artists, See if there's anybody you know and call them. Absolutely. That'll help you get in the door. And, or and it'll help you decide if you want to get in the door. Yeah, now. now because if the guy said, I had a really bad experience, yeah, then sure. you're like, eh, maybe I'll try another yeah, one. for sure. And even if you don't know any of the artists, I think that most of us are of a mind to be sharing. Some aren't. Some people will hold things back and be secretive, but I think that for the most part uh, we're not hell-bent on uh, keeping other people down. Right. And I, I want to see people succeed and I, I would do my best to get somebody into a particular gallery and tell them all I could about that particular yeah. gallerist. So, so you might just call somebody even cold. if you don't know them. That's the point. You call them cold and say, I'd like to introduce myself. I saw that you were working with the gallery down the street. I was thinking about going there. Do you have a minute, if, if you're not willing to meet me for a cup of coffee, uh, do you mind uh, telling me a little bit about the gallery? I'm happy to send my uh, information over to you. You can take a look at my website and you can see what my stuff's like and, and maybe you can give me some advice. And you'd be surprised what kind of information you might get. That's such great, I love that. I love that. All right, so say you don't know anybody, you're just gonna go in cold, and you decide, you kind of narrow down the galleries that you want to apply, I guess, is that the right word? Yeah, sure. And so how do, how do I approach a gallery? Do, like, who do I talk to? Do I just walk in? Do I call them? I, I have done it a couple of ways. We'll be talking in one of our next meetings about gallery competitions, but uh, some of the galleries will have group competitions. They generate income from that, and that's one ah. way to get your work in front of them. But I don't think that that's a way that to really introduce yourself to the gallery. And if you are geographically close to the gallery, not thousands of miles away, uh -huh. I have physically just walked into the gallery. And I would walk around and I look at the gallery. I wouldn't introduce myself as a prospective artist for the gallery. I want to see how the gallery looks. I want to see if that's the kind of gallery I want to be in. Okay. And if it's not, if there's something about it that I don't care for, maybe they're showing what I consider second rate art. Okay. And I don't want to be there. It, that's not going to help me out. Uh, then I'll just look at the artwork, I'll say thank you, and I'll leave. After they say, if I can help you, please let us in. But I'll just leave. If I like what I see, I'll try to figure out who the boss is, 
and then I'll go over, I will introduce myself, I'll hand them my card. And your card has to be nice. Yes, it does. It's a first impression. Yes. And I would explain to them that I'm a local artist. I've just moved into the area, or I've lived here for 20 years, and I've been here before. I admire your, your gallery here. I'm wondering if you have room down the line to show a new artist's work here. Now, they may say, no, we don't do that. And you say, okay, that's fine, but then keep talking. Uh huh. And just don't take no for an answer, though you may not get an answer. Uh, just develop a friendship. Say, well, I'm just curious, uh, what kind of artist do you usually have here? And uh, do you have any competitions down the line? Is there some way I can show you some of my work and so forth? And try to, to develop some common denominator, some thread where you can continue your conversation. Uh, I'm sure they'll be very nice to you. And uh, then make sure when you get back to your studio, you crack, op crack open your computer and send a thank you note to the gallerist mm. uh, with your website, perhaps. Uh, if you do have a portfolio book, uh, which we can talk about at some later date, and I would bring that with me the first time and just have it under my my shoulder. So and while you're scoping while you're there, the place say, out. Yeah, here, let me just show you some of my work. May I leave this book with you and you can take a look at it. But you have to really recognize that these gallerists, especially the top quality galleries, are literally inundated with artists who want to show there. Right. So. On any given day, I remember uh, looking over the shoulder of one gallerist's computer, and there were like 25 artists that were sending emails to try to get into that gallery. So how do you make an impression? Sometimes you can't. Bottom line is sometimes you can't. But you do the best you can, and sometimes you'll break through. You know what? I, as you, you met my nephew. He's here. Richard, yes. and. Uh, He's trying to apply for his first job, and it brought me back to when I was 19. I read How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. That book changed my life. So I'm, I'm making him read it. Because what happened to me, and this was, of course, not an art gallery, but it was my first, I was always a waitress. So I wanted to get out of waitressing and do something different, and it was for a gym, like to sell memberships. And, but I was terrified. I was 19 and I had never done anything but waitress. So I go in there, it was an ad in the paper, and there's like, like 12 people waiting to interview for the job. And that, jo that book stuck in my mind. So I, got, I was like number 10 or something. I go in there and all I did was say, man, you must be exhausted from talking to all these people. And I knew from the minute she looked at me that I had the job because I made it about her, not about me. So what you're saying is so good, just to develop a relationship. That book is amazing. You've read that book, right? Yeah. He likes it too, because it's a, it's, Dale Carnegie was an amazing writer, so it's, it's stories and it's fun to read. <laughs> but yeah, establishing a relationship with these gallery. Now, what, okay, so let me, let me go, though, because let's say I'm Take shy. Take a deep breath now, relax. Let, okay. Let's say I'm shy, because I'm not shy. <laughs> but most people are shy. So you walk in, but we all have a little intimidation when we want something out of someone, right? So you walk in and they're busy and you're there for, you know, half an hour and it's like, should you just leave because they're busy with other customers? Don't interrupt them. Come back another just time. Just come back. It, all right. It, it's important. If it's important enough for you to do, it's important to come back and to do it To come back. Yeah. Okay, so the next question is, so let's say you're there, you're waiting, and then they finally get a break, and you say, hey, I'd like to introduce myself, and you know, I love the artwork or something. Talk about them first, or their artwork, or the artwork, I should say. And then you start talking, and you realize that this is not the right person to talk to. And you don't want to insult them, but how do you, how do you get to the owner? Well, I, I think you have to ask them directly. Um, I understand that you may not be the person I need to speak to to get my work into this gallery. What's the best way to do that? They might say, well, please send us an email with your website, or please send us a sample, or perhaps we'll set up an appointment. You'll come back and you'll meet Joe. He'll be here on Fridays. He talks to new artists. 
or whatever they do. I don't know. Okay. Just ask them. Just ask them. It, these are just people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it always helps to have that warm, fuzzy yeah. feeling between you before you ask for something. Yeah, sure, sure. It's, I mean, it's always And that's a that. skill that can be learned. Yes. Get over the fear. Get, get some confidence in yourself. It's always best to have a, an uncle to kick in a door for you, but sometimes you have to kick it in yourself. Yeah, we don't always have that. A warm approach is better, but cold calls are a way of life in business, <laughs> and yeah. this is a business. Now, I'll give you an example. If we have a couple minutes, uh, one of the best gallery experiences of my life was a, uh, a show in northern Tuscany that I got as a result of uh, somebody looking for artists to participate in a show in uh, Bagno di Luca, northern Tuscany, on LinkedIn. You no, found I mean, it on LinkedIn? On LinkedIn. I would have never thought to look so, on LinkedIn for an art show. So, so I, I responded, and it happened to be a, uh, a family of artists, a husband and wife who were sculptors and painters from Australia, that owned a gallery in this little town outside of Luca in northern Tuscany. And they would look for artists to participate in shows from time to time. And I sent them a note. I said I studied in Tuscany for seven years. And uh, I would be very, very interested in showing in your gallery. And I sent him my, my website. And within three days, I got a, a note back from him. I, I couldn't contain my joy. It oh was unbelievable. My gosh. And yeah. we, we went up, my wife and I went over and we, we brought the pieces with us. So you carried them? How do you carry pieces well, like? We ro in rolls. We rolled them. Oh, and then, and and then had them framed there? Yeah. And I could talk about the best, a better way to do that at some other point. If you <laughs> We took the pieces with us because I really didn't know what kind of printing capabilities they had there or framing. Good so I wasn't point. sure. So I, I put them all in tubes, one big tube, and I took everything over, about 15 pieces. And uh, we set up the show, my wife and I, and we sat the gallery for two weeks. The uh, gallerists had two properties where they lived in Banya di Luco, a little place up in the hills and then a place right across from the gallery and we they, they rented their apartment to us right across the street from the gallery uh -huh. and for two weeks we just lived in the town and sat the gallery and it, um, put on the opening and it was really one of the most amazing experiences of my life so this was answering an ad basically how did you see it on LinkedIn I, I did you do a search under or was it because you had fine art on your tagline or it's it's because uh, they have groups they have artist groups ah. fine art groups gallerists and so forth so if you look under different groups you'll find uh, art related uh, individuals who see involved. I don't I don't spend much time on LinkedIn I really probably should of course I should do Pinterest I should do you know <laughs> should do so many things so, so that was just uh, that's, lightning striking. that's really exciting though so, so, uh, and I've had quite a few gallerists say, I'm sorry, not for us. So, And that's a little more personal when they turn you down at a gallery than if a competition, right? Where they, you, they look at your work and say, no, sorry, we're not for you. Where a competition, it's like one picture and you're you know, competing against 7,500 people. Or I, I take it all personally. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I figure, why not me? You know, why? Yeah. But, no, you're right. You have to get over that. And you realize that there, there's so many fabulous artists out there that uh, you're just uh, swimming upstream with a lot of people trying to make a hit. Yeah. All right. So, so okay. So let's say, you know, I, I do my wandering. I, I talk to the owner or whatever. How many pieces should I... Now, you recommend putting together a book, right? Yes. Okay, so the, you're this saying... This would not be for a show. This, would this be, is to try to get into yeah. a gallery. Right. So you have a book. You, you put together a book of what? There are about 20 pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, these, this would be more of a retrospective of my best work. Okay. 
the, the, the best hits of Rich Smuckler, you know. <laughs> uh, but probably most importantly is the website. And uh, your better pieces should be on your home page and preferably it should have a, a, a moving um, change of your pieces on the website so they don't act actually have to get into the site to find them and they should be your best 10 pieces or so. Okay, okay. But if, you, if they'll look at the book then that's even better yet because some people are more touchy-feely, they, they want to see the texture and the color. Of right course if you're there right then and there yeah. you can just, I guess you could have an iPad but I don't think it would make the same impression. Uh, the iPad has good resolution but it's not, it, not the same. And the often same. the gallerist will just go on to their, you give them your card, they'll go on to your website right there. On their own computer. On their own computer, and they're usually fairly large. And you get good resolution on most of the sites. Yeah. So. Okay. So having a good business card, having a book, and having a good website, those are the three biggies that you should have before you even approach a gallery. Well, you should have a good body of work. Well, ah, <laughs> yes. And, of course, we talk about this all the time. Your, your body of work should have its own unique look because there are a lot, of, what, a lot of photographers out there trying to get into galleries, so you have to stand out somehow and you have to have your own unique look. I love that idea of having a book, though. Just I think that's a brilliant idea just because it's right there. They don't have to actually type in anything or, you know, it's right there and they can just kind of um, look at it. So what, how many pieces do you think you should have in general before you go? Like on your website, do you need like hundreds of pieces? Do you need, I mean, what, what, how many is too little, I guess, is a good question. That, that, that's a hard hard question to answer. I mean, I have hundreds of pieces on my site, but I have them broken down into to different sub-sites and collections. So if they want to see my abstract expressionism, there's about 20 pieces there. That I may have 100 or 200 or 300 that I'm not showing on the site. Don't show everything, just show the really, really good stuff. Or keep some of the good stuff back. But, uh, and then I have, perhaps, for travel photography, I'll break it into countries and towns. And so, it's not like here's a, a, a landscape, here's a bird, here are people, kids playing, here's a portrait. There has to be some tie to the, to the a link to the pieces that are in each subset. Okay, and I agree with that because nobody wants to look at a thousand pictures, but if you have a thousand pictures and you have them in, you know, categories, it's a little bit so then you only have to look at 20 pictures. Yeah, well, if somebody knows, for instance, they're interested in California landscapes and they can go to that section, there are 20 pieces there and they can make a selection or if they want an abstract piece and they can go for the retrospective, that section, they can go there. But uh, you don't want to keep people searching and searching on your site because they're going to get bored and just say forget about it. You better have a good website. Yeah. Okay. Um, so a couple ways to get in so far we talked about was just going there and talking to them and the other way was competitions to get in. So what if you get in? Then what happens? Do they like just call you or email you and say, hey, we like your work? What do they say? What do they say to you? What happens next? Okay, if it's a show, then you're probably just going to get an email and then we say congratulations, uh, you've been accepted into our annual show. Uh, Please send, you know, send us the piece in a, a high-res image. I, I'm just talking off the top of my head. Uh, you'll need to get your piece here within such and such a date. Uh, they'll give you instructions on, on wrapping, no peanuts, <laughs> or, or something like that. And it has to be here and accepted by um, our company at a certain address by a certain date. And uh, it will need to be picked up or sent home on a certain date as well. They usually give you a parameter. The opening will be on such and such a night. You're certainly welcome to come and invite guests and how many people do you think you might bring? So you're expected to go to the opening? No. No? N not for a group show. 
Oh, okay. Not for, not, not, I mean, there'll be like 30, 40 other artists there, so they don't really care. You'll be invited. You'd, you'd want to go. I mean, it's a lot of fun. Well, plus you're, you're networking, yeah. and you might meet the other artists, which could help you in your career at some point. And, sure. and, and I think, you, is, and correct me if I'm wrong, but if you're there, isn't it more likely that one of your pieces will sell than if you're not there? I think so. I mean, somebody's interested, then you can tell them a little bit about the backstories, and they get to like you, and they, you can tell them a little bit about your art and your philosophy. Maybe they'll start to collect your work. You don't know. It's yeah. hard to say. If you're not there, anything can happen. Right. Now, if you get accepted into a gallery in a solo show, or maybe just a show for a couple artists, then that's a whole different ballgame because you'll be having a dialogue with the gallerists about the show. And just because the gallerist says, yes, Rich, we'd like to have your work then that opens up the door for a whole set of uh, communications that you have to square away before this comes to be. Okay. Like what? Well, you're going to have to enter into a contract. That's scary. You're a lawyer, so you maybe yeah. not, not as scary for you, but well, for most of us, contract, the whole word is a scary word. <laughs> I know, but, but <sighs> contracts can be made with simple language, with simple concepts, and you have to understand what you want to get if that contract is going to help you. Uh, most gallerists will have a, a form contract and they'll probably just put it in front of your face and say, sign here. Don't do it. Okay. There's some things you have to figure out before you sign that contract. Okay. How long will your work be on the wall? How many pieces will you have in the show? How much space will be used up? In other words, if you look around your studio, you can find pieces that are nicely spaced. They're, they breathe. Uh, some gallerists will take works and just kind of jam everything together because they want to get as much oh. merchandise on the wall as possible. Okay. So you have to be insistent that your pieces will look good on that wall. Okay. You also have to be insistent that the pieces are lit well. Ooh, good point. Uh, I've had a couple negative experiences. One here, I'm afraid to say, at the Naples Museum here, uh, here in Florida, where I was in one of the several shows that I participated, and they took my stuff and they put it in the back hallway by the men's room where there was no lighting and here I invited friends to come see my work, and I was embarrassed. I was yeah. humiliated. Yeah. Uh, other times that I've shown here, it was in the main hall, front and center, so I felt proud. Now, you really have not much to negotiate with when you're in group shows like museum shows. But when you're getting involved with galleries, the better known you are, the more successful you are, the more leverage you're going to have in terms of space, where the area gets shown, lighting, and other elements that are important to the contract. Uh, some more elements to consider. What happens if a piece is broken while it's in their possession? It's in their possession. They need to be responsible for that. Okay. They may like. They, they might want, not want to do that, but they need to do that. Yeah. What happens when the show is over and your 15 pieces come off the wall? Are they going to take those pieces and put them in the back room and continue to try to sell your work? Or are they just going to say, okay, Rich, come pick up your stuff because we don't have room for it here? Might they keep a few pieces? Uh, are they going to put your work on their website? Oh. To link your your pieces to their site. Okay. Um, we talked about pricing, and we can get into that at some point as well. Uh, what happens in your mind? What do you do when you pick up those fifteen pieces of work? Uh huh. Uh, are you 
obligated to the gallerist if you find somebody to sell your work privately while your work is still well, that, with, with them. Yeah, well, that's one of the big things that everyone needs to work, walk because I, I know some of the galleries here say, I will represent you and put your work on my wall and sell. However, we want an exclusive for, sometimes they'll say, all of Florida, including anything you sell on the Internet. That's not a good deal. Well, it can be. It can be if it's a terrific gallery and, oh, they're, okay. and they're working in it. Yeah, that's a good I point. I mean, if they're going to market you, if they're going to bring people into the gallery, if they're going to go out to the homes of the local collectors and the local designers and bring the designers in and say, here's a rich smuggler, he's new to our gallery, his stuff would look great at this new apartment development that's going up. Let's bring a few pieces over there and see what we can do. Okay. And the gallerist is going to say, well, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to spend my time and my money to do that unless you give me Western Florida, or all of Florida, or all the continental United States. I recently made a deal with a, a recent gallerist, a gallerist in Florida, um, where I gave him a certain geographical location, and I was able to sell my stuff on my e-commerce site as long as the pieces were of a certain size. Once they got to be larger than that, then I would have to give him a certain piece of the action. So, but all, ah, all, all that's of, interesting. Though. All of this depends on you and your particular needs, and everybody's different. Well, for most people starting out, though, they don't really know. So they just these are things that are good. It's good to get this out there so they they know what to look for. You can start thinking about it. Yeah, if you're not selling your work at all, and somebody says, "I want an exclusive," maybe it's worth a shot. You know, depending on what the exclusive is. You wouldn't. How long a contract should you? should you sign with these people? 30 days, 60 days, 10 years? Uh, no, not, not 10 years. <laughs> Exaggerating. No, I, I, <laughs> if you don't have a real feel for the gallery, I would say six months with perhaps a month to month after that that would continue automatically okay. unless either side decides to end the contract by letter mm -hmm. or email. So, so think about this. If, if you've gone through all the trouble to bring work in, and it's sitting there, and the gallery says, well, you know, we're going to run the show for the month of December. Well, that's pretty good because that's seasoned down here in Florida. Yeah. But how about if they say, well, we're going to run your work for July and August. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's here. Twice as much time. <laughs> But Still 10% 10, 10 of the people, yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, so you've got to keep your mind tuned in to what's going on here. Okay. Uh, don't be starry-eyed about getting your stuff on the wall of a gallery. It's, uh, you could find yourself jammed up as a result of it, and you want to do the right thing by yourself. All right, so what would be a good contract? I mean, wh what does a normal contract say? Like if a gallerist gives you a contract, what is it going to say? Do they have a standard contract that most galleries use? Most do. And what would it be like? M most, exclusive to, most to, to the area. Have an, ex have an area. exclusive to the area for a certain period of time. Okay. Um, that they will be responsible for uh, hanging, storing, and protecting the piece while it's in their care. Okay. That they will receive a certain percentage of any piece that they sell. And what's the normal percent? Forty percent, fifty percent sometimes. Okay. Usually no more than that. Do they help you with your pricing or do you come up with your own pricing first? Well if you if you uh, recommend or suggest a certain price that they think is not saleable then I'm sure they're going to say something. Um, well most of the photographers I know really underprice their stuff. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a problem. I think that you need to recognize the, the theory of, of economics a little bit, that if you price something so little, people are going to think it's not worth anything. Exactly. On the other hand, if you 
price it too high, then people are going to say, I just can't, I love it, but I can't afford it. Yeah. You know, other people will say that uh, the price of a piece or any piece of art is that amount that somebody's willing to pay. But I, I would recommend that young artists go online, take a look at other artists' sites, and see what the prices are that they're going at. And and you know, fairly successful yeah, artists. Yeah, good, because good. you can go on Fine Art America and the prices are all over the place and exactly. and, and what you know, the race to the bottom, how cheap can you go? Exactly. Because you just want to sell something and to the point where you're losing money, that doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. But so many photographers do that, it's hard to understand why they think that's a good idea. I would rather not sell my my work at all. Me too. And give it away. I, well, I would rather give it away for free than sell it too cheap. I here's a gift, but not here's my thing that cost me a hundred dollars. You can have it for a hundred dollars. Well, the irony is, on a couple occasions when I was in Europe, I ended up donating my work to to various charities because, for tax purposes, it was more effective for me than the packing the stuff up and shipping it back to the oh, United States. Oh, that's right. And the, the irony is that if I sold you a piece of my artwork for a thousand dollars and then something happened to that piece in your home or your studio or gallery then you could put in an insurance claim for a thousand dollars. If something happened to that piece while it was in my possession, it's worth the cost of the paper and the ink. Yeah. So it's worth not so once I give it to you and you pay me money for it, it's worth a thousand dollars to you and it's still worth the cost of framing. Right. So uh, and printing and printing and the rest of it. So uh, when I was in Europe I was able to make a donation of about 15 pieces, but if you add the cost of the framing and the printing and the shipping and all of that to get there, it's not the cost of the piece if it's sold, but at least it's substantial enough to to make a difference for tax purposes. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's a yeah. that's an interesting take. So back to the gallery. So okay, so you're going to say suggested pricing. I want. I think this should go for you know, $3,000. And uh, here's another question. Do they dictate the size of the, of the photograph or do you? Or is that a compromise as well based on how much wall space you're going to get? Well, that's the answer. It depends on how much wall space. It just came with it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, it, you want to work with this person. So you say, what do you think is the best way to go here? And they said, we like to put on like one piece per every four feet. And we think maybe along this 20-foot wall, we'll put on four or five pieces. Or other galleries will say, put on, I don't care, as much as you want. And which is a subject I want to get into right now. Because okay. there are some gallerists that are purely selling space. And they will rent the space to you, literally, for you to put your work up on their walls. It's called a vanity gallery. And if it's so important to you as an artist to have your work in a gallery and you're willing to spend money just to rent wall space to put it up there, that's fine. If that's what you want to do, fine. Uh, that's not me. And um, I, I, have, I have a different approach towards what my goals are as an artist. but recognize that the artists that are going to do that are also going to take a percentage most likely of the pieces they sell plus they're going to charge you for the cost so for the wall space so keep that in mind when you're dealing with some of the the gallerists i would stay away from gallerists that are showing their own work in the gallery as well oh that's a good advice there are some that i know and i won't mention them here on this show but you want the gallerist to have your interests at heart and yeah. not to be coincident, coincidental with theirs. So if they're working on straight commission, they're probably going to work harder 
than if they're charging you for wall space, number one. Number two, if it's Peggy Farron Art Gallery and Rich Smuckler wants to put his work up, I'll put you in the back room somewhere, probably. Is that <laughs> or, or if someone says they, they, they like my work, I'll for, say, for, oh, for I've got something so similar. I have one I want to show you. You might like a little bit better. Yeah, you know, that's yeah. really good advice. So, Keep your eyes and ears open. Yeah, up. that is really, really good stuff. So, um, all right, so they're, they're selling. How, okay, so do most of them, if they accept your work, not just for like a group show, but say, okay, I want some of your work. I'm going to hang it in the gallery for six months. Do they start off, most of them start off with an opening or? Sometimes there's a show, sometimes there isn't. Okay. I mean, they may just have open walls, and they bring artists' work in, and they revolve them in and out. But um, you want them to have a show because it's so much fun. <laughs> and I, I don't think much work is sold during the show, but it's a great party. <laughs> and, and it is really a highlight of it, it's a it's a celebration of what you do. Okay. Bring your friends and your family and your loved ones and. It's, it just makes you feel so damn good. Ah, <laughs> and it's a good excuse for a press release yeah. and all that sure. other kind of stuff, keeping your name out there in the news. And uh, oh, you can oh, you use it. I mean, you definitely use it. But uh, from a business point of view, it's, uh, it's remarkably important. But it makes you feel good inside. Ah, <laughs> is there anything else about the shows that we should know? Well, typically the... Or an opening show. Do they just have... Actually, I interviewed uh, a woman who owned an art gallery who she was experimenting with closing shows as well as opening shows, and she wasn't sure the jury was still out when she was on the show if it was a good idea or not. But So you've got your opening show. You're going to use it for PR. You're going to have a good time. Yeah. Don't drink too much. No, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> but but you, you're going to use it uh, in your website, in your blog, in your any of your social media. Uh, you want to make sure that the show is well advertised and that the gallerist um, uses whatever forces they could summon to uh, to send out notices to their mailing list. How many people are going to be notified? what kind of uh, food will there be? I mean, are they responsible for it? Or oh, so, that's or, a good point. You know, Do you as the artist have to pay for so, that or is the so, gallery? Sometimes we brought the food. Sometimes, sometimes mm -hmm. it's them. Okay. And so it's something you want to talk about. And it, it's you're putting on a show. Yeah. So you want to make sure all the elements are in place. Now, are you as the artist responsible for bringing in the bulk of the guests or is that their job? I don't think so. I mean I certainly bring in a lot. I make a point of bringing all my friends because it made me feel good. I didn't but I don't expect any of the people that I invite to buy any of my work. They, yeah. they already know me. Yeah. So I, I really want the gallerists to to bring in the people. Okay. Okay. This is just a party flat out. Enjoy it. Is there anything you should think about while you're at the party? <laughs> I mean, obviously you have to, your business cards and people are looking at your art. Is there anything during the party that you should think of? Yeah, I would stick by your art. In other words, um, keep an eye out for people who you don't know who are there because they're your friends, who are spending a little bit of time looking at your pieces. Mm. and politely go over and say hi I'm the artist if I can help you with any information about this I'm right here I'll be glad to talk about it and that's the way I do it mm -hmm. um, some people just stay right by the wall right by their pieces and of course you're there selling cars people are kicking their tires yeah, yeah. So you, you want to be there to, to help anybody who's willing to or another idea is to just start telling the story of the work. If you see someone looking at it, say, "Oh, I'm the artist, and you know, I had to get down on my belly to get that, or whatever." I think, however you yeah. feel, 
you need to, to sell the piece. Might be an easy way to approach people. Yeah. All right, so what are some last tips or some tips? What are, let's round this up, wrap this up, okay. wrap it up. <laughs> so getting into a gallery, what are your five tips? I don't know. Five, I'm guessing. Five, five Three tip. tips? <laughs> well, I show up, look professional, be confident, have the right materials with you. We talked about the card, the book, the website. Follow up with an email thanking people just like you would in business. Make sure that uh, once you're um, given the entree into a gallery that you, you work out and think out the elements necessary for the opening and for the after show what happens when the works come down. Okay. Good, good, good. Thank you for being on the show. Always a pleasure. I Peggy. appreciate it. You are a good guest, man. <laughs> Anybody's, anybody out there, feel free to call me or email me. You can look at my website. All the information is there. It's richsmucklerphoto.com or you can email me at richsmuckler at yahoo.com. Got it. Got and it. it's S-M-U-K-L-E-R. Not like the jelly. No jelly. <laughs> Uh, um, I'm hoping the audience will do a big favor and leave a review on iTunes. We read them. We really appreciate them, and they help us come up in the search engines. I'm Peggy Fair, and thank you so much for watching the Understand Photography Show. We will see you next Friday at 4 o'clock Eastern Time. Yeah!